Joe. Matt Lauer, what's happening, my man? How are we feeling? Good, good, uh, good morning. We got the the Joe and Matt FBU Huddle Breakfast Show. I think that's what the the new rebranding. How you feel about that? Well, it feels great. Although we typically premiere this at nighttime, we'll uh, we'll record it a little bit in the morning. We got some great guests coming on our show today for our annual for our weekly FBU Huddle, kind of recapping that we had four camps this weekend uh, on all ends of the uh, great United States. And uh, we discovered some great athletes this weekend. It was great to see some of the talent coming out of some of the, we had Iowa City, we had Chicago, we had Alabama, and then we had the almighty Atlanta camp. At, yeah, uh, I mean, what, a, what an all-star, you know, uh, quad of camps right there. I mean, obviously Atlanta with uh, nearly 300 kids and then Alabama, like you said. So, you know, Joe, I'm excited about this morning. I mean, I was in Chicago and Iowa, uh, so excited to, to dive into that one. And then uh, for you viewers at home, we got a special, we got two special guests today, Joe. You know, one was not enough. We're, uh, we're bringing on the king himself, Eric Richards, uh, the managing partner of Football University and the national director of the selection committee for the All-American Bowl on NBC. He will be here today to talk about Atlanta, Atlanta and Birmingham. And then we're bringing on defensive back Jayon Allen, the star of the Atlanta camp, Joe. He really balled out, didn't he? Oh, he did, man. What a great story he has coming out of this weekend. I don't want to give it away, but it is a doozy. I'll tell you what, if you're listening uh, and watching and tuning in, and maybe you came to the Chicago camp and you just want to hear what took place in Chicago, stick around. Great story of this young man. Um, and also, too, hey, listen, if you're new to our FBU huddles, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you get the notification. Make sure you download the Football University app. So all this content gets pushed right there. Make sure you're following us on our Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, so you get all in our Facebook, so you're getting all of our uh, great content that's pumping out. And you get to see all the recaps of the photos from the camps. There's some stuff that we just, you know, that's that's sprinkled around, whether it's in our Instagram reels or some great video from some of our alumni college players that are coming back to the camps. So make sure you don't miss out on any of the uh, the great stuff because we just give you a snippet of what happens on the weekends here in the weekly FBU huddle. Man, you got to really uh, follow along and pay attention. So, Matt, what do you think we start off with the um, Iowa City recap, man? First time in Iowa. You were there. Matt, what uh, – uh, tell us a little bit about, about, I mean, you know, we don't have, we've never really been to Iowa. We though we do have some alumni that have kind of mm -hmm. come out of that region, you know, uh, or technically if you think of one of them, I know personally, Nico Reganey, who plays for Iowa is a wide mm -hmm. receiver, played on team Connecticut, came to the Connecticut camp for years and then, uh, uh, earn himself a full scholarship out there. It's a great story of a young man believing in his dream to play big time football, and now he's a a, a star in the in the rotation receiver. Uh, we've had uh, AJ Epinesa, who I personally got to know as an Army All American. You know, coming out of, and obviously he was a superstar uh, for Iowa defensive end. Now with the Bills, and uh, and then we've got Dallas uh, came in um, from Iowa. You know, obviously from our St. Louis area and now plays for Iowa. So let's three kind of ties to the Hawkeyes that have all come through our, our FBU uh, program. Yeah, I mean, look, Joe, we haven't been in Iowa ever, um, you know, in terms of a regional camp. So I know that our team was extremely excited to, to get out there and see what Iowa had to offer. I mean, Joe. Starting right here, I mean, the world's what does Iowa have to offer? I mean, I'll right off I 80. And, and if you know, you know, and if you don't know, you don't know, right? I mean, had the pleasure of stopping there with the running back coach Chad Spann in between the Chicago and Iowa camp on our drive over. I mean, Joe had a movie theater, all right, it had a barbershop, it had a dentist theater, all right, it had by Samurai Swords, all right, there was nothing that, that you could, you know, they had everything, Joe. Like, I uh, never could watch a movie, get a shave, and buy a sword all in one spot. And that's what the world's largest truck stop offered. But that was a quick pit stop if you may, <laughs> on the way to Iowa. And uh, we had some talent out there. You know, Cornell College, beautiful campus, uh, beautiful hosts. And I'll tell you what, they we had some linemen at the Iowa camp. Did we ever? It might have been the best crop as a group 
of offensive linemen that we've seen in the Midwest to date, uh, or maybe just to our camps to date. We had, I would say, just, I mean, every single offensive lineman there was a stud, very solid. And we were not surprised at the end of the day that the Gatorade G Award high school MVP was Cape Root. I mean, he's already getting looked at uh, by Iowa. He's got official visits lined up with multiple uh, college schools. And a lot of this came, you know, during and after the event. But he was a mammoth of a man all day long, uh, fantastic technique, really knew how to sink his hips and dig in when it comes to pass protection, knew how to drive in terms of run blocking and um, he kind of led the charge as the leader of that offensive line group. And that was by far the strongest position group there. In terms of middle school, uh, we had a fantastic little running back, uh, Caleb Melzer. Uh, I believe this was his second or third camp, but Caleb is somebody that has progressed uh, throughout his time with football university. And don't looks can be deceiving. I'll tell you what, when he puts on the soft shell and he puts – Puts things, uh, puts on the cleats. Uh, he's a different athlete uh, out on the field. Extremely shifty. Uh, fantastic to see him out there. Great hands, uh, and definitely made some some waves uh, at the Iowa camp, along with a a few other middle schoolers. Oh, excuse me, yeah, Trey Firestone right here. He might have been the most complete player at the camp overall. Um, you know, Cade won the MVP just for his solid play throughout the the entirety of the camp, but Trey might be the most intriguing collegiate prospect, uh, wide receiver uh, out of Zionsville, Indiana, somebody that uh, has picked up some interest from um, some big time D1 power five schools, uh, also plays baseball, but uh, he was a man among boys out there at the wide receiver position uh, throughout the day. So he kind of walked home with that soldier award. And then, you know, here's the other guys, the, these middle school all camp, no sweat, all camp team, Joe. These guys have punched their ticket to the Paradise Coast July 9th through 11th at the Paradise Coast Sports Complex in Naples, Florida. They are already trying to book their tickets uh, to the Top Gun Showcase. Um, but these guys were great all day, did a fantastic job on both sides of the ball. Excited to have these hungry student athletes down in Naples. I mean, you got number nine over there. Oh, go back, Joe. No, go back. Yeah, number nine all the way, you know, kind of all the way to the right, second one in. You might think, oh, he doesn't have great size. That's a that's a fifth grader, Joe. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. You know, uh, Zavon Ford uh, has a chance to be really special, play defensive back. Number 75 there, you know, the second one in from the left side. That's a seventh grader, going to be eighth grader. Um, you know, I believe his name was Blake Starks, and he just had a great camp day as well, uh, potentially getting involved with – uh, FBU team Kansas City down there for the national championship team. So a really strong crop of middle schoolers. And uh, that led into the high school group um, in our high school. No sweat all camp team. Just a good collection uh, from the Iowa camp here. Uh, like we mentioned, we mentioned Trey Firestone. Um, you know, we had a couple running backs that were out there that were fantastic. The strongest position here, Joe, might have been the quarterback position. Nice. Um, you know, the, the quarterback position was outside of offensive line, excuse me, but the strongest skill position uh, was probably quarterback. We had some guys that could really flick it, um, and, and the ball really jumped out of their hands. It was exciting to see, um, you know, what we were able to do. But overall, uh, great camp out in Iowa this weekend, Joe. Uh, fantastic turnout. Excited to see. Uh, us build and grow the momentum uh, in Iowa because, look, Joe, I want to make a few more visits to the world's largest truck stop. Why so not? We're going to need to keep going back to Iowa. That's part of the experience of being around FBU is the circus is you just go around the country, you get to meet, meet all these great people. Well, let's do this, Matt. Let's take a quick timeout uh, before we get into Chi Town and the uh, great camp you guys had in Chicago. And uh, let's hear from one of our great partners at Football University. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is not a fair fight. Oh. I'm a soldier. This is not a fair fight. I'm a soldier. March like a soldier. Stomp you to the ground. You had a plan. Till I hit you with this boat back. You lost this fight when you looked in my eyes. Look at me, see. A soldier hit you. You 
will stay there. This is not a fair fight. I'm a soldier. This is not a fair fight. I'm a soldier. Don't let me die. I'm a soldier. This is not a fair fight. I'm a soldier. This is not a fair fight. Soldier sport. All right, Matt, second camp uh, actually took place on that Saturday of the weekend. So maybe it was your first camp of the weekend was in the Windy City, Chicago, Chi-Town. You know, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, we've been to Chicago before for numerous years, maybe not recently in the past couple of years, but we certainly got some good alumni that have come out of, you know, the Illinois area or even, you know, some of our camps. Um, you know, so tell us a little bit about the whole Chicago camp and, and some of the great things that took place there. Yeah, look, I mean, we haven't been in Chicago in two, three years now. Um, you know, we've been out of the market and the Windy City is a place we got to be. There's some of the best talent uh, in the country right up there in uh, the northern part of Illinois. Uh, one of the biggest cities in the country. Obviously, uh, you can see right here some of the talent. Um, you know, I'd like to highlight uh, the young man all the way to the left, Marion Stewart one of our FBU freshman All-American Bowl alumni uh, from this past year. I had a fantastic uh, showing down in Naples at the Paradise Coast Sports Complex uh, last December. And uh, they're actually just now in the middle uh, of their football season, Joe. So uh, Chicago right now is playing football. Um, so it was interesting to, to play with that a little bit. But, man, did we have a strong showing in terms of the talent that was out there, which is not a surprise. You start right here with a young man uh, at the high school level, Bo Weldon. Bo, tell you what, Bo has been with us, Joe, now for, for four or five years. He's been to multiple camps. He's been to Boston, Columbus, Cincinnati, Indianapolis. Yep. Now he's in Chicago in this past camp. weekend. Yep. And the, the development that he has shown over the last few years is incredible. He's an extremely physical student athlete, well put together, can play a multitude of positions in, in our opinion. I think that he's currently playing a uh, running back at his school, but Joe, he might actually end up being a better fit at linebacker when it's all said and done at the collegiate level, just has great hips. But Bo is somebody that we're excited to have down at Top Gun. We're excited to, to see how he progresses. And I think he's primed for a big uh, senior season. Um, you know, as he heads to his final year of high school. And then we get into uh, our middle school. And, Joe, you wouldn't know who was the middle schooler, right? If I, if I brought both these guys up, you'd think they both were high schoolers. Yeah. Uh, Zane Schellinger, just a, a mountain of a man, uh, actually a twin. Uh, so if you can imagine this, Joe, there was two of them uh, <laughs> at, the, uh, at the FBU Chicago camp. But he impressed all weekend long, uh, excuse me, all day on Saturday. Uh, great size, great frame, uh, instantly uh, was put on the freshman All-American Bowl watch list for this coming December down in Naples. So excited to see him progress, and uh, he could be somebody that gets an invite at Top Gun to the freshman All-American Bowl. And then you kind of go right into uh, our national combine invites, right? Our, our big three. Look at these guys right here. I mean, uh, D line and, and this was all D though. G no no Joe no no love for the O uh, oh, in Chicago. Uh, you know you got Cole Roberson here all, all the way going left to right. Uh, fantastic defensive lineman can can play. Uh, you know whether it's a three technique five technique shoot. I mean you could probably put him out there at a wide nine if you really needed to Joe. Uh, and then on the opposite side uh, is Carol PV another. Uh, defensive lineman played with great aggression and strength. And right there in the middle, you got Stephen Howard Jr., a young defensive back, showed a lot of promise. He's still a little raw, but plays with a, an understanding and a, and a mental maturity that is rare for somebody that's a 2024. And I'm excited to see him compete uh, down in San Antonio, Texas, in the Alamo Dome for the, the National Combine. And then, Joe, I think, you know, we had a couple more players right here. Vegas C, you want to mention him. He took home the Soldier Sports Award. He was – he's been in multiple camps now, and he showed up and he said, Coach Matt, Coach Span, his running back coach, he said, I'm walking out of here with an MVP. I'm walking out of here with something today. I'm going to ball out. And, boy, did he ever. Uh, what an exciting young 
uh, student athlete at the running back position uh, consistently. He almost took home the MVP award uh, in Columbus and Cincinnati, Joe. So not surprised to see him come to Chicago, ball out, uh, and leave with some hardware. Excited to watch him. And uh, then we had just a great crop of uh, all camp teams uh, right here, you know, at the high school level. Uh, you can see just the the size and frame of some of these guys. Uh, the the all camp team for high school was just absolutely loaded. Um, you know, you see it's it's highlighted right there by Stephen Howard Jr. Uh, in the middle. You obviously you got Bo in there. Um, so a lot of great student athletes punched their ticket to the Paradise Coast. And then you kind of get into the middle school level here for the middle school all camp uh, no sweat team. I uh, want to highlight one young man right here, kind of front left, number 45, Tyden Shuck. Joe, he, I think he ran better routes than anybody at the camp. Uh, wow. He was just an unbelievable young middle schooler. Joe, he was actually a Top Gun last year uh, as a sixth grader, and he was making waves with the coaching staff down in Naples last July. So he's somebody that whose route running is four, three, four years ahead of the curve. I mean, he is just extremely mature for his age, and the overall size will just come as he continues to get older. Uh, he's already at a decent size for a sixth grader, but, man, I'm excited about his future uh, and the promise that he has. But overall, Joe, great, fantastic camp. Can't wait to get back to Chicago. We'll, we'll, it'll be even bigger next year, I assure you. I'm sure it will, man. That's great to, great recap. And some of those athletes look like the part, you know, really between the bow with Zane, all those guys, Vegas. I mean, you can see them uh, standing out there. So fantastic camp. I'm curious to see where some of these kids and how well they do in their upcoming season. And well, more importantly, how well they do at top gun. A lot of those kids, you know, from the Midwest do a great job down there and kind of show up some of those sec country boys down there. Uh, speaking of which sec sooner or later, we're going to have, the man, Eric Richards, coming up in our next pad, talking a little bit about the Atlanta camp, the Alabama camp, where some uh, football is bred and bred down there, uh, born and bred down there, I guess I should say. Need more coffee this morning. And uh, looking forward to having him come up in the next section of our FBU huddle. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button and uh, download our F Football University app. And we'll be right back with Mr. Eric Richards. Hey, we're in this wonderful stadium yeah. at the Paradise Coast Sports Complex. to this week's FBU huddle. We are joined by none other than the national scouting director for the All-American Bowl game on NBC, managing partner of Football University, and the guru of talent evaluation, Mr. Eric Richards. Man, Eric, great to have you on the huddle. And uh, man, you were back in your backyard this weekend at the Atlanta camp, one of the largest camps we have, 300 plus kids the tradition of talent that has come out of the Atlanta camp. We can see it right there with Mr. Cam Akers, the number one draft pick this year's draft, Trevor Lawrence and Derek Brown are just a few of the hundreds of kids that have come out from the greater Atlanta camp and the history of it. So welcome to the show, Eric, and give us a little recap from the Atlanta week. Uh, thanks, Joe. It's good to be back with you and see you. And yeah, Atlanta has been a staple for the last 10 years of producing talent. I think a lot of that is due to the uh, metropolitan size of Atlanta. Uh, you know, it's boomed uh, up to over six and a half million in the last decade. And with that come, you know, people moving in and having talented young athletes and, and, and kids and people that go on to uh, play football. I think uh, the other thing is uh, given its proximity um, it's easy to get to from people from South Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, uh, North Carolina, surrounding states. It's an easy city to get get into, and, and there's plenty of hotel space. And we were lucky enough this weekend to have some of our alumni stop by, Joe, and help coach this weekend. Jemias Williams, who uh, 
uh, is at Georgia State now as a grad transfer and does a little bit of everything there, running back, DB, uh, wide receiver, special teams. And uh, he came through and coached our defensive backs. Uh, Dante Sawyer that played in the 2014 All-American Bowl, uh, went on to South Carolina, was all SEC, uh, had, had a couple years in the NFL, and is now a coach down at Camden County. Uh, came through and ca came back and coached. Uh, we had Ross Malmgren, the quarterback at Charleston Southern, who broke all kind of high school records in Georgia, had been a camper, had played in the FBU National Championship, did the uh, All-American, the National Combine, came through. And last but not least, uh, Jamari Sawyer, who's continued to give back, the FBU, we had him at Top Gun a couple years ago. You were there when we had Trevor and Andrew Thomas, number one pick for the New York Giants, and DeAndre Swift, uh, and just a host full of deals. Um, well, Jamari's still in college, and uh, he's going into his senior year. He's on every preseason All-American list there is, and um, a lot of NFL agents have reached out to me. They feel like uh, he's going to be the first interior lineman taken in the drafts because he's so valuable to play center, guard, or tackle. He's done it all at Georgia. Uh, he came through and he, I've never seen anybody enjoyed uh, giving back and coaching like I did him. I mean, when we told him it was the end of camp at five o'clock, he was like, man, do we get to come back tomorrow? I said, nah, they're just one day camps now, Jamari. Uh, so anyway, that, that on that end, it was a great time. And Joe, yeah, we had talent. We'll run down the list of uh, players here. So let's start off with some of our Gatorade Award winners. We had, you know, a talented Mr. Allen right here. It's a great kind of story that we're going to learn a little bit about later on the show, Eric. But you can watch it tee it up a little bit and talk about him. Yeah, I know you and uh, Matt are going to do an in-depth interview with Jayon. And uh, here's a prime example. You know, Joe, we get this a lot. Wow, FBU is expensive on the camp in uh, deal, $150, $200, uh, depending on um, when you get signed up under what's special and everything else. But here's an athlete came in. We know what COVID was about and the restrictions of COVID. They played an abbreviated schedule in South Carolina where he's at. So he didn't get on the, uh, get a lot of game tape, uh, came in with no offers. I had not heard of him. Uh, drove him from South Carolina with his dad uh, the morning of the camp, uh, went through the camp and it didn't take long uh, that, that morning before they said, Hey, uh, we got a player down there. Uh, Rusty Mansell from 24 seven sports was there. Brooks Austin from Sports Illustrated was there. Jeff Sentinel uh, from AJC was there. And they're like, uh, th there's one down here that's not on anybody's list. And so uh, as we made our way down the hill and watched him and Justin Miller, our defensive back coach, who's former number one pick of the Jets, Clemson alumni, used to be NFL's fastest man, uh, said, hey, Eric, we, we got a player here. And, and Jayon continued to make plays throughout the day, walked out of a very, very – you got to understand, Joe – to walk out yeah. of the Atlanta camp as Gatorade MVP. That's a big and deal. Yeah. I mean, you won that over kid with kids with multiple offers. And we'll sure we'll, we'll talk about some kids here that uh are some athletes here that that you know got combine invites and uh made the no sweat FBU team. Uh but he walked into the camp unheard of. And you know, for those of you that say, ah, oh, you got preconceived notions of who you're gonna pick and everything, look on the screen right there. Uh, DMJ on and ask him if we got any preconceived notions notions. And so uh, um, he uh, he left the camp and immediately uh, Sunday some, he said it was a barrage of coaches following him on Twitter. Uh, whether that was because of FBU, I can't you know, we can't take complete uh, claim for it. All I can tell you is the young man spent two hundred dollars and his parents just got four hundred thousand dollars in return. No doubt. No doubt. Now, obviously, it's a great story. We're going to visit with him a little bit later. But we also had, you know, Travis Smith Jr. has walked. Also, was a uh, the middle school Gatorade player of the player of the game. Yeah, you know, you're talking about serious on the watch list for the freshman All American Joe. Travis Smith Smith Jr. moved way up our boards. Um, another one that I'd heard about as he played youth league and everything, but he's gotten taller. I mean, he's a good six two and a half, six three. Uh, lanky wide receiver fits that Calvin Johnson mode. Um, he uh, he definitely jumped out to us. Walked around, away with the Gatorade Award winner. Spent most of the camp going against varsity competition, uh, where we had to bump him up because uh, he wasn't getting tested on every rep down at the uh, middle school level. So we bumped him up halfway through the camp, 
to the high school level and he continued to perform up there. But he uh he he was this close to being named a freshman all American. Hopefully we'll see him at Top Gun and he completes that uh uh goal of his. Now, speaking of Top Gun, let's talk a little bit about some of the no sweat all school. The looks like the the high school group here, or is this the middle? This is the high school group here. Looking aside, yeah, you, you can never tell in Atlanta. No, it's tough sometimes. So it looks like you got some pretty good, uh, pretty good athletes right here that all punch a ticket to come down and compete at Top Gun in Naples. Yeah, you know, they, we we were deep. This might have been the one of the biggest no sweat uh, all camp teams we had, but it was a three hundred person camp and. Um, you know, you had Caitlin Bryant from the D linemen. Michael Wallace uh, was D line group. We had a very talented D line group there. Uh, you know, and the list goes on and on at, at D line and O line. Uh, uh, linebacker was was great. Tyler Vaughn and Owen Robinson. I'll talk a little bit about Vinny Canosa here when we do the combine invites. But you know, it's 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 Atlanta, and so you know there were there was almost two and a, two to three at every position. No doubt, I'm sure. And even at the middle school, here's a middle school group here. They tend to get, uh, you know, pretty competitive. I mean, look at the size of some of those middle school kids. You know, that's why I got confused. Am I looking at high school? Am I looking at, at the middle school group? Yeah, you had uh, Christian, Christian Henderson, the defensive back, uh, Montrevious e Eccles, uh, uh, Jake Cruel, the D lineman, uh, you know, um, Mason Townsend. You had J Jordan Perlotti, who I know has uh, won an FBU national championship with Team GFL. Uh, is in there from linebacker Dylan Torillo. So yeah, it was um it was extremely um talented and uh you know some other people in that mid middle school group, Nate Russell at quarterback, Ethan Long at quarterback, Ju Justin Baker at running back who was our FBU middle school national player the player of the year for FBU, remember the the Cavan award? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Justin Baker was at the camp. He's Jacked up, he is um, uh, transferred to to Buford High School, which is a powerhouse program that most of your listeners know, and uh, th they're assembling a, a great eighth grade class up there. That uh, I look forward to be on the national scene by the time those guys are sophomores and juniors. But it was good to see Justin back. He put on some some good weight since the national championship. You know, he was a three time national champion with FBU, and so. It's good to see him. He had Leonard, uh, Lamario Martin, the wide receiver, and James Morrow from D line too. Fantastic. Well, those are all guys we'll certainly be watching as they elevate to the to the high school level. Um, but we did have some guys that uh, you know got some tickets to down to uh, San Antonio. It looks like well, you know, we, we got a nice crop crop of guys going to the combine. Yeah, and I was real strict on this, Joe. You know, I mean, Atlanta camp, uh, so three hundred people. 300 people and we and we we gave out six uh there'll be some more given out, out at top gun as you know we do a large portion of the invites for that particular event at top gun uh but we had to kick it off in atlanta and i'll just go you know kind of around the horn on these guys i see Vinny canosa there in the middle the six foot two 225 pound linebacker from alatoona that's been starting since he was a freshman former adidas freshman all-american uh uh, if he if Vinny can keep his speed up as his as his size and weight goes up, he's going to make a heck of a mic um, in the back there. I don't know if you can see him, Joe, big one twenty two. If if he, he if he stand, size man right there. if he'd stand up a little bit taller, that's Daniel Calhoun. What if I told you he was a freshman, twenty 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 four wow. freshman, six five, three hundred thirty pounds. Uh, already has Georgia, Georgia Tech, Michigan, Michigan State, Arkansas. Uh, we probably missed on him not naming him a freshman all-american yeah uh the selection committee will will take that uh hit is just one of those things where the game's so talented and daniel didn't have a whole lot of film uh that that freshman year because he's playing up on varsity but he's one that you know got his national combine invite i wouldn't be surprised joe if he comes down to the national combine and is in that top five of mvps all across the country that's how that's how good he is. Uh, awesome. Zach Plus, uh is is there. He he made the drive from the Orlando area. He didn't get to attend the Orlando camp, so him and his dad drove up. Uh, he also won the Wilson Quarterback Challenge, which was a little different than the spin rate we do. We had to uh, get creative in Atlanta due to the number of the quarterbacks and had, had a little bit of long ball and target competition that Tony Boward, our instructor, ran. But Zach came in. He was by far the – 
uh, head and shoulders MVP at the quarterback position. Michael Welch, the running back there, number 65, is out of uh, Baldwin High School in middle Georgia. Short, just exactly how you'd want to build a running back, Joe. Five, five, eight and a half, five, nine, uh, a 185, 190. He's got the frame to put on about 205, 210. Shifty back, catches the ball out of the backfield. Uh, and then Kobe Askew, the wide receiver out of Harris County, 6'2", 190. And he is shooting up everybody's charts. I would say outside of Jayon Allen, the athlete I got the most calls about this weekend from colleges was Kobe Askew. So, um, you know, watch for him to explode on the scene. He's the type of uh, athlete with a big junior summer and a big uh, a junior season in the fall. He, he could ex- explode by the time he's a senior and be a national c- recruit. Then you had Martavius Young, who came in and did DB and wide receiver. Um, I, I believe Martavius is from Mississippi. Don't quote me on that, but I'm almost positive. I knew he wasn't from the metro area, and I think he came in from Mississippi. And uh, uh, Atlanta has always pulled some of those Mississippi athletes over to that camp. You you started off the show with talking about Cam Akers. That's where we found Cam Akers, in Clinton, Mississippi, at the Atlanta FBU camp. And uh, yep. here, here we are nine, 10 years later, and uh, the starting running back for the Los Angeles Rams. And then I don't want to leave out Steven Johnson, D lineman, um, uh, had a gr- great camp, got some good work under Dante. That that pretty much covers Atlanta. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, really great history of that camp. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the amount of alumni that have come out of the Atlanta camp is just few and far. I mean, they're just they're all over the place. They're at every level, playing the college level and in the pros. And it's and it's you know you mentioned earlier at the beginning that we're having so many of our alumni wanting to come back with the camp, and that's not just the Atlanta. I'm seeing it across the board, whether it's Texas, whether out in Ohio, you know, for the Northeast camps. I got some of our guys starting up. I even got some of our alumni that are now college coaches that are coming back, you know, to coach at the camp. So it's just just a great thing. So hey, Eric, we're gonna take a quick pause to hear a great message from one of our our key partners here at Football University. Then we'll come back and let's talk a little bit about our Alabama camp. All right, so stay tuned. Alabama. Right back. All right, Eric. We got you back for your second camp of this past weekend. We went down to the great state of Alabama. We're down, FB was down in Montgomery. Again, great talent pool of tradition of great football down there in Alabama. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about some of the great athletes that you got to see and evaluate uh, down there. Let's start with maybe our Gatorade Award winners. You know, we had uh, Cameron Sparks. Uh, Tell us a little bit about him and what he can do. Cameron Sparks. Uh, Let's – uh, I hope he's still around playing football in four years, Joe. So I'm still getting to continue to watch him. He's one of the top basketball players in the country in his grad class. I didn't know that until I left there because he didn't tell me. Uh, and then when I looked for him on Twitter and uh, to retweet his G Award and Freshman All-American Bow Invite, lo and behold, I find out he uh, he, he plays football uh, and basketball uh, up at the uh, – uh, private school in, in, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He's well known in the basketball world. If you Google him on YouTube or whatever, he's dunking on people, blocking shots and everything else. Uh, but let's talk about his football prowess. I was going to say, yeah, what's it look like with cleats on? Hey, he looks real good. Uh, but, uh, you know, he came in and started dominating camp immediately. We had to bump him up to high school. Um, uh, just, you know, has everything you're looking for in a, in a football player. I don't know that football long-term will ever, uh, uh, you know, get the fruits of labor of this because he's such a good and high level basketball player, sim- similar to the Pacheo kid, uh, from Seattle that we saw in the FBU national championship yep. uh, five years ago. That's now the top five player in the country and going to do, uh, but, Right now, he, you know, he walked in, and we're going to make it. A, we're going to make it a hard decision for him. Does he want to be a, a a football wide receiver, or does he want to be a a you know power forward? Well, he looks the part. And then you add the other award winner, Mr. Pierce, 
at the same time. Yeah, Jotavian Pearson. It was it was you know is a unique situation. Normally, when you have a middle school athlete dominating, you don't have another middle school athlete of that caliber to put right across from them and let them go head to head. Whether it's O line, D line, linebacker, running back, or in this case, DB wide receiver. But that wasn't the case here. Uh, Cameron got good work all day uh, against Jotavian Pierce, who's uh, enrolled in the uh, Carver High School out of Montgomery, which has produced Marlon Davidson, Zach Wilson. It's a, probably the most uh, uh, prestigious uh, football tradition over in Montgomery, Alabama. And uh, he was up to the challenge of, of going against Cameron, and he won some and he lost some uh, reps. And I think that's what made each one ba better. You know, uh, Cameron being at, at the Baylor School there in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Jotavian in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, they uh, – I, and it, you look at that picture right there, you would think Jatavian's short, but he's probably 6'1". Yeah. Uh, so that tells you uh, about Cameron Sparks, good 6'3". Six, 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 so not only did they, did they win the Gatorade Award, but now they also looks like they punched a ticket to the Freshman All-American Bowl. Yeah, I mean, they were so – Joe, this very rarely happens. They were so yeah. good. They were so good that – the, out of the two G awards, we gave them both to middle school athletes. I, it's only happened once or twice in the last decade that I've been at. Um, so that tells you that wasn't a slight to the high school athletes there. And we'll talk about some of those, but it just tells you that these two are, are very, very special. And uh, uh, it's great to have representation out of the Alabama and Tennessee on that freshman all American bowl roster. No doubt. So let's give some love to maybe let's, let's talk about a little bit of the no sweat all camp team that we had there. So let's talk a little bit about some of the middle school talent. Obviously, we just talked about two of the best players, but let's give some of the other kids some love uh, that you saw that kind of really impressed you at the camp, Eric. Yeah, there's a young man in that picture all the way to the end uh, on the left uh, opposite Low Wood named Julius Lane. And he comes out of the fast Houston program, Joe. He is extremely high on the freshman All-American Bowl watch list. I would say technique-wise, he may even be a little bit ahead of Jatavian. Uh, uh, you know, this is this is a DB to watch. And uh, if you notice, I tweeted on Monday, uh, it's very easy to fall in love with these six-foot-one, six-foot-two corners at the high school level. Uh, but uh, the, the, when you look at the NFL rosters, the average size for a defensive back in the NFL is five foot eleven, and uh, Julius, I think, is going to fall in that range uh, of of where he ends up from when he goes to play prep football. Probably some of the best technique uh, we've seen uh, on the middle school level this camp season. Um, outside of him, we had Randall Cole from D line. We had Mateo Wells, O line, who's very well known to us, and John Tower, who was the O line coach. Hazen Shelton out of Mississippi played for the Mississippi FBU national championship team. I see him standing there uh, in the back. Um, Ricky yep. Simmons, a quarterback that has a lot of uh, uh, huddle highlight films and is very active on social media, came in and was every bit as good. Uh, I think you saw Tony Ballard, uh, number 12 there, standing next to Low Wood is uh, JD, JD Brown, Tony Ballard. Uh, may, had a tweet that said, hey, here's the next one. And Tony doesn't do that very often. We know no, that. No, not at all. Uh, and he's and got so, the eye for it. In there, Carlos Campbell at running back, Jamari Harrison at wide receiver, and Eric Vance at wide receiver. So it was, uh, from a talent standpoint, it was every bit as talented as the Atlanta camp. Uh, obviously, we didn't have the numbers that we had in Atlanta. We were about 150. Uh, but it was a good first stop in Montgomery, Alabama. And going so to the high school team. Yeah, yeah going to the high school, high school team. Let's get some high school some love. Yeah, going to the high school team, you got Jordan West there at defensive back. Uh, Taurus Metcalf is a, uh, if that name sounds familiar, he is the first cousin to DK Metcalf. And so uh, it's a young DB that just started playing football in the last year, year and a half. But, you know, he's got those Metcalf genes, and he's going to continue to improve. Um, you know, we've got Jalen Harris there, Warren Malone, the linebacker, Devontae Williams, that linebacker. Chase Wood, the big O lineman, had a real good camp and looked uh, – I think he was uh, three for three in the final five show-off challenge at Lowe had at midfield. Uh, Phillip Jones at, 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 uh, Phillip James at Q QB. Ashton Hollins at wide receiver. Uh, Dante Snodgrass, the running back, was far and ahead, the best running back we had there. But Quentin Montgomery at wide receiver we'll talk about in just a minute. And J.C. Sibley, a tight end, uh, was the best tight end I've seen 
on the camp circuit so far this year. Wow, outstanding. Now, of these high school guys, some of them uh, received an invite to the ultimate showcase down in San Antonio this January uh, yeah. with the National Combine. So let's talk about these four. Yep, you got Corbin Williams uh, there on the left in the blue shirt, the wide receiver, um, was, you know, probably our, our one of the top high school wide receivers, obviously. Uh, Brock Glenn in the hat there. Uh, kind of looks similar to another Brock we we know well, Brock Vandergliff. Yeah, uh, out of out of uh, the Athens area, the quarterback that's now at Georgia had a great day at quarterback. Uh, Ethan Newman, the O lineman, number one hundred four, has got a nasty and mean streak. Uh, won all his reps, and then Nick Persiano, the linebacker, number fifty eight. There, very uh, similar to Vinny Canosa that we talked about in Atlanta. If he keeps yep. his speed up and he's able to run with running backs as he progresses, uh, he's going to be a good one. Well, that's awesome, Eric. Well, this is great insight into this camp. Uh, it is always great to have the guru, Eric Richards, stopping in on the huddle. So where, where, what's your next camp, Eric? Where are you headed to next? Down uh, the road? Suit, suitcase is packed, and in 24 hours, I'll be in Phoenix. Heading to Phoenix, heading a little West Coast, man. There's some great talent out there uh, hitting the West Coast streak a little bit. Um, and then I know when once we come back, we're taking a little break. We've got Matt coming back with that interview with Mr. Allen and talking about his experience that he had at the Atlanta camp and what's transpired in the last three or four days since his experience at uh, at the regional uh, FBU camp in Atlanta. And uh, Eric, any parting words to the young talent out there that are coming up? And regardless of what FBU camp they're going to, any final thoughts that you could – or words of encouragement given those athletes that are attending the next camps? Yeah, Joe, I think I would say to the athletes that earn a Top Gun invite, we, we look forward to seeing you in Naples. To the ones that didn't, keep working, keep grinding, take what you learned at FBU camp and platform for it. And for the ones that are coming up on the camp list, specifically out West and in our Northeast camps, um, uh, you know, come in shape. I think that's the key thing. I, it's a, it's a one day camp and the reps are packed. Uh, you, you, you gotta be ready to go when your number's called. No doubt, Eric. Well, listen, man, it's always great to see you, my friend. You'll be good to travel safe and we'll see you uh, on the road uh, towards the top gun. Thanks Joe. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm here with the star of the FBU Atlanta camp, Jayon Allen. Jayon, how you doing tonight? Man, how you? I'm, I'm all right, man. I'm a little. I'm a. I'm all right. It's my first interview, uh, so you know I'm a little, a little anxious, but I'm gonna be all right, man. Hey, no need to be nervous. Don't worry about it. All right, we're both looking good. All right, both got our polos on. It's a, it's all good. We're relaxed. We're having a good time. So what well, you're. Uh, you're a defensive back, 2022, uh, from Bluffton, South Carolina. Where do you play high school ball at? I play high school ball at Main River High School. Okay. Yes, what uh, what what type of corner would you say that you are? You like you like press? You kind of a little bit more off? You like to bait the quarterback in? What's your what's your style of play on the field? Ooh, man, I can, I can do I can do either way, man. Um, I'm still you know developing, so so I feel like I I, I like I like press. I think I like press a little better. You, know you, like, I mean? you like to get up in the face like a little it. bit, push them off. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I like it. So I, I usually have the size advantage, so so you know that usually is in my advantage. Okay, so, you're using that that height and that strength to your advantage, huh? Yeah, I like it. So so John, tell me a little bit. You know, going into this weekend, right? Uh, what was the experience like at the FBU Atlanta camp? How was the competition? You know what were what were some of the things that you saw and and how do you how did you feel that you performed? Um, man, let me let me start to the beginning. First of all, my uh my D, my DB coach that I had there, man, shout out to you, man. I've never had a DB coach that was that was that into it and that passionate, man. 
I mean, I've, 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 I've fed him to his energy, man. I, shout out, shout out to him. Um, but he, yeah, we started off doing some DB drills and, and you know, we, um, then we did some one on ones and I saw my competition and it had some good side. It had some, you know what I'm saying? But I trained for this all day, every night. So, you know, I feel like I was ready for the, um, for the competition. So. You were ready for it, you know. You were trained up. You were ready to go, and then, and then the coaching and the training was was fantastic at the camp, right? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Who uh, did anybody uh, give you fits? Any wide receivers there give you any problems? Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm gonna give him credit. They had this uh this dude with some size. He was stocky. He had some speed on him. Um, he had he had it all going on. Um, I like this game for sure. I like it. So, uh, so Jayon, as you're kind of continuing on here, you know, you walked into the FBU regional Atlanta camp with with no P, no Power Five, no D1 offers, and then Monday morning, it's my understanding that that you had your first collegiate offer. Is that true? That is true, man. That is that is true. It's, so who'd you get an offer from? This is a movie, man. Who'd you get the um, offer FIU. from? FIU. FIU. Yes, hey, sir. congratulations. Look, that's that's where dreams come true, man. You got the first offer. It's going to be one of many, okay? You're you're on the right path now. You're on the right path for sure in terms of your college recruitment. Talking about college a little bit, as you know, it's not just about Xs and Os, right? It's not just about football. Have you thought about, you know, in college, uh, what, do you, what do you want to study? You know, maybe what major you want to do? Right, so um, I'm in TCL right now, the Technical College of the Low Country. Mm -hmm. We just finished last week, but um, I'm still taking courses in um H HVAC, you know, heating and air conditioning. Yeah. So any anything in college that can go towards engineering in that field, or um, technology in that field, you know, anything in that field of heating and air conditioning, because hey, um. I want to own my business. I want to own a business one day in heating and air conditioning. And um, so, and my my professor told me one day uh, a good sales pitch to your clients whenever I own my business is that I play collegiate level D1. I'm a football athlete. Um, who knows? I went to the pros. Um, you know, I was successful. I was a, I, I did all these things and I'm a pretty famous, you know, that's some, um, that's some, um, that's some a good pitch, team. man. All right. And I love it. Like, that's that's what we like to see, man. I mean, it, it's fantastic to go play college football. Maybe you have the opportunity to play in the pros one day. Who knows? But to have a passion and a dream already that's outside of football, uh, owning your own business, regardless of what it's in, it sounds like you've got some interest in engineering and uh, owning an HVAC company when you're older. Might have to hook you up with my boy down in Charlotte uh, at, Co at Coit Cleaning. They do some stuff, so I might I might be able to get you a, a hookup already, right? So our connections oh, go even further than football. Oh, yeah, um, I, love that, man. I, I, I really love it, man. I, I like love it. it. I love it. Well, here, I want to I want to end with one thing. You know, if you could say that there was one major takeaway from your camp experience this past weekend in Atlanta, what's the one thing that you're kind of taking away that you learned um, or that you're grateful for? Um, what's my takeaway, man? Put you on um, the spot. You put me on the spot, man. Um, <laughs> I got I got so much from that experience. For one, um, one little opportunity could should, could could make a million. You know, one little one spotlight, one little crack could make the whole sun appear. You know what I mean? You want you never know what's behind that wall. And all it took was one guy, one cameraman who came to me and said he he liked how I played. He liked. He liked what I did, you know what I'm saying? And that changed everything. He put that camera on me, and then everybody started coming to him. So that's one thing, you know, always take advantage of your opportunities. Um, listen listen when uh, when, when a coach is talking to you. Man. He, I know I'm going to my next camp next week, and the week after that next camp, so I'm, uh, um, I'm definitely going to take what he taught me into, into every rep. Um, and, um, I think that's some fantastic – yeah. takeaways Jayon. i mean look you know if if there's a crack right the slightest crack you know for the sun to shine take full advantage of your opportunities you never know when they're going to come right pay attention listen uh i mean i think that you're wise beyond your years it's exciting for us to see you have the opportunity 
to potentially play at the next level and and that our camps were a part of that. Obviously, you've put in on put in all the hard work leading up to the camp, and that is why you should be thanked and you should definitely take some pride in that and all the gratification. Enjoy the moment right now. Look, we're excited for you on your journey. All right. And we look forward to seeing you kind of at the next FBU camp. Maybe it's FBU Top Gun or maybe it's playing at FIU in 2023 in the fall. Uh, either way, I appreciate you coming on tonight and we'll see you soon. Appreciate you. Wow. This week's episode of FBU Huddle. If you tune in, you know that I am not Joe Buffard, but Joe Buffard is here in spirit. Uh, I had a great interview earlier with Eric Richards and love that we were able to end this week with a hot defensive prospect out of Bluffton, South Carolina, Jayon Allen. He certainly will be picking up offers soon, and he will be joining us down in the Paradise Coast for the FBU Top Gun Showcase. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week as we recap the FBU Charlotte and FBU Phoenix. Show.